All we're going to do here today is I'm going to show you how we can solve a problem like $5,000 being invested into an account, paying 6.1% interest compound quarterly, where we want to know what the account balance is after five years, but using this graphics calculator. First of all, to get into the right application, we need to select our apps button. And we want to go to the first app, which is the finance app here. And we want to go into the TVM solver. So option one again. And you'll have a list of different information that you can input and also calculate using this application. So let's begin by looking through at the different information that you can find, but also need to enter into the calculator. So the first thing that the calculator looks at is this capital N value, which represents how many times in total the interest is going to compound for the entire investment. Now to find that, you need to multiply the number of years with how often it's compounding. The I percentage represents the interest rate as a percentage of your actual compound interest. Now it's really important here if you're used to using the formula where you convert it to a decimal that when you input this value into the calculator you're going to input it as the actual percentage rather than the decimal representation of it. The PV stands for the present value which is how much you're going to put in to your account if you're in a savings situation or how much you're going to loan from the account if you're in a loan sort of situation. The PMT stands for payments per term. Now, if you're making regular contributions to your savings, that's what we're referring to. Or if you're in a loan, that might be how much you're paying off on a regular basis. The FV stands for future value. Now, that's going to be how much of the loans remaining, or if you're in an investment situation, how much money you're going to have in the account balance at the end of your investment period. The P slash Y stands for payments per year. So if you're making regular contributions to your account or if you're paying off a certain amount in a loan situation, that is what the P slash Y stands for. How often are you making those payments? Then the C slash Y is the number of compound periods per year. So that's how often the account is compounding its interest. Now with compound interest problems, you can actually calculate any one of these values if you have all the other information. So when you've got this sort of problem, I like to begin by identifying the information you actually have. So the first thing is $5,000 is placed into account. That means that we're putting money into the account, which is our present value. Now if we're putting money into an account, we represent the present value here as a negative figure. So this will be negative $5,000. If you're in a loan situation, you'd be taking money from the bank. We would represent that as a positive amount. Now the interest is placed into an account of 6.1% interest. So rather than representing as a decimal, as we do when we're using the formula, we represent it as a percentage here. So it's 6.1%. And it's compounding quarterly, which means it's going to compound four times per year. So the compounding per year is four. Find the balance of the account after five years. Now we're gonna use the years here to find out how many times it's gonna compound in total. So it'd be five years multiplied by four times per year that it's compounding. We wanna find the account balance, which does mean we wanna find the future value. So I put a little question mark here. Now, the payments per term, we're not contributing anything extra. So this will be zero at this stage, which also means the payments per year, we're not making any regular payments, but I tend to keep this the same as the compounds per year, unless it's actually different from it. So now we input this information into our calculator. So we can input five times four as it's written here, and the calculator will automatically multiply that out so that would be equal to 20. We put our 6.1%, our negative, make sure you're using the negative button, so negative 5,000, negative because we're putting money into the account. Our payments per term is zero. Our future value we don't know yet, so I'm just gonna leave that zero. Payments per year and compounds per year are both at four. 
Now to calculate what the future value is, you need to move your cursor so it's highlighting which one you want to calculate. And you'll see this green solve on the enter button. To find this value, you need to hit the alpha, which now is looking at the green buttons of your calculator, and hit the enter, which will solve that value for you. Now you'll notice that we have a positive future value here. The reason why this is a positive future value is this is how much money you're going to be able to withdraw from your account at the end of the investment term. So our future value here is going to be equal to approximately $6,767.53. Therefore, at the end of the investment period, we can expect an approximate value of $6,767.53 in our account. If I want to know how much interest I earned in that period, I would take the future value and subtract my present value from that. So that would be this amount, subtract my 5,000, so my interest is approximately equal to $1,767.53. So to summarize, the TI84 plus C eGraphs calculator does have an app within it that can quickly calculate different values. It's not restricted to the future value as this problem had it. If you're after the amount of time, you could find that through your end value. However, you would have to remember that, that end value is representing the total number of compound periods. So you'd have to convert that to actual time. If you need to find your present value, how much you'd need to invest, you can find that. If you need to find other values such as your percentages, you can also find these using this calculator. Mm -hmm.